The pressure to release new software faster is higher than ever. Luckily, we have sophisticated DevOps tools and CI/CD pipelines to help us out. But one question still remains: What about our databases? With every new update, every new feature that we add, we are bound to modify our database schema. We might create some new tables or modify columns in an existing one. That's totally normal. But how do we migrate the schema changes I've made in my local database all the way to production? Let's find out. Let's set some basic expectations before we start. First of all, we're talking about SQL databases here. We can pick up NoSQL database some other day. There are two major ways to perform automatic database migration. The most popular one is embedding the migration logic within our apps. Many Java frameworks can perform an auto migration simply on startup. While this is elegant and simple, it requires our application to have elevated database permissions. This can potentially be a huge security risk. So our first requirement is to make sure that the tool can work as a standalone unit. It should also be easy to integrate it with any CD pipeline. This is super important. Another important ability we absolutely want is transparency. We should be able to review and change the SQL queries that will be fired upon running the migration. Let's take an example to understand why this is important. Consider this. I have a table with a column of type integer. Now, due to some changes in the business logic, we need to modify its type to a long or big integer. Now, we know that we can perform this modification by a single alter statement. However, our DB migration tool might not know that. It might drop the column and replace it with another one. This can cause data loss. Now, that's a huge problem. Because of your stupid migration tool, you'd lose the account balance of all your customers from your production database, and everyone, I mean everyone will laugh at you. Not that it's ever happened to me. Let's move on. In easier words, we don't want the migration tool to update our production database directly. Instead, we want it to produce a SQL file that we can execute to apply the necessary changes. So the output of the migration process will essentially be a SQL file. Now for a subsequent migration, like when we want to release a new feature, we will have to compare the state of our updated local database with the SQL file we had created for the previous version. This is exactly as hard as it sounds. Inspecting and parsing the SQL file to figure out the database schema is a big no-no. Instead, we use something called a shadow database. The concept is simple. We apply all the SQL files to a temporary database called a shadow database. This will recreate the database schema of my previous release. Now we can calculate the delta between my local and shadow database, which is easier to do. Our migration tool should be able to support this out of the box. The fourth feature we want is the ability to mark certain migrations as complete. The thing is, not everyone begins their project by using a database migration tool, even though they have been asked to use one like a billion times. I'm looking at you, Jared. The first step of migration always starts with a create table statement for each one of our tables. But this will most likely be unnecessary if your production schema is already in sync with your development schema. In this case, we want to mark this first migration step as completed so we can simply ignore it. We need to use this feature carefully, like very carefully. Promise me that you will. The last feature which we may want is the ability to perform rollbacks. I don't think this is super important, but it could be necessary in some use cases. So how can we achieve all of this? Well, the first step you need to do is like this video and smash that subscribe button. Like guys, please. It really helps. Jokes aside, we're going to look at a tool called Prisma. All the JavaScript folks in the house already know it as the next gen ORM. The thing is, Prisma is way more than an ORM. Prisma supports database migrations as a first class concept. It is open source, supports multiple databases, and is surprisingly easy to use. So let's start by onboarding Prisma onto an existing project cuz someone forgot to add it on day 1. I'm not pointing any fingers here. Here we have two databases, one for local development and one for production. I've made sure that they both have identical schemas. The first step we need to do is generate the initial migration file. All we need to do is run one single command. Make sure that we are pointing to the local database. And that's it. The output is nothing but a simple SQL file which represents version 1 of our database. 
Let's just move this file to its designated directory and then create this log file. Don't ask me why this log file is important. I don't know. We'll also have to make a schema.prisma file. Prisma treats this file as the desired state of our database. This is the folder structure Prisma needs for the subsequent migrations. All these files will be committed alongside your code. Prisma likes to create one such SQL file for each release or version of your app. These files capture the changes made in your local database for that release. To travel across versions, all we have to do is play those SQL files one after the other till we have reached the desired version. This is like version control for our database schema. Unfortunately, Prisma allows us to move only forward in time. We can't roll back to a previous version. But if you ask me, I don't think it's a huge problem. Now the first migration step is kind of special. At this point, Prisma doesn't really know if our production database schema is in sync with the local one. It assumes that the target database will be empty. So the SQL file it generated earlier simply contained a bunch of create table statements. We've just got two tables here, one for the trainer and the other for Pokemon. Which reminds me, aren't you excited for Pokemon Scarlet? I mean, have you seen the starters? They're like so cute. And one eternity later. And that is why I never use Charizard in my party. Moving on. Like I mentioned earlier, our production database already has these tables. So instead of applying these migrations, we will simply mark this one as resolved. It's simple. If you inspect the production database, you'll notice that Prisma has created a new table for its internal bookkeeping. The act of marking a step as resolved is simply adding an entry to this table. This is how Prisma knows what's the current schema version of our database and which additional SQL files will have to be applied. That is it. That is all we need to do to onboard Prisma onto our project. Now to simulate a subsequent release, we'll change the name of the power column. Let's rename it to power level. Cool. Now we need to generate a new migration step in Prisma. We need to run two commands for that. First, we need to update our schema.prisma file to reflect the desired state of the database. Next, we calculate the delta between my SQL file and the desired state. I'm gonna use my existing database as the shadow database here. And that's it. Let's move these migration files to its own directory and check out what Prisma has generated for us. As you can see, Prisma is recreating this column. This is not the ideal way to do this. Prisma gives us control to modify the SQL file as we feel fit. Let's quickly modify these queries to make them more appropriate. And that's it. The final step is to apply the migration onto our production database. As you may expect, a single command is all we need. Great. And just like that, our migration is complete. We can inspect PG Admin to confirm if the changes have been made. They have. Prisma is indeed a simple yet super powerful tool. Its docs are a bit tricky to navigate, but I've made a GitHub repo for you guys with some handy scripts you all can refer to. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Our journey to deliver applications faster is just beginning here. As a next step, you should absolutely check out this video which speaks about what DevOps really is and how you can get started with it today. Do like, share and subscribe if you found this video to be helpful and don't forget, I am your tech bot here on YouTube and hopefully in real life.